Hey everybody, welcome back to another Moy Revod review. Uh, this one is on Dorado, another console game. Uh, this is Plat 5. Player says uh, they think the match went okay for us with the enemy team having their movement moments too, uh, especially after the first checkpoint on round 2. Managed to win round 1 on extra time and had a somewhat close win on round 2, winning 3-2. to two. Uh, at some point, our defense, I started arguing with our tank after I felt they were playing too far behind, uh, keeping the team outside the objective. We argued until the end of the match. I'm pretty satisfied with the pressure I applied on the enemy while being able to heal my allies. Downside, I would say, is not paying attention on allied positioning, leading to situ some situations uh, where I took a fight I couldn't stand alone. Also, uh, just curious about how their ore bounces w went. Um, anything they can improve there. So let's get into it. All right. So the the first thing I want to talk about, don't correct your teammates. Don't. Don't argue with them. Don't tell them what they're doing wrong. Don't tell them what they're doing, you know, that they could be doing better. Okay. There are ways you can kind of, there are ways you can kind of uh, hint towards that, but you have to frame it in a positive light. You know, Tank, hey, what would you say? You said they were uh, playing too far behind. Hey, you know, if they're still on Diva or whatever uh, at the time, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump so and so player over here. C can you go with me? Right? Don't even tell them they're doing something wrong. Ask them to do the right thing. Okay, that's that's the only time you should be correcting somebody's somebody's behavior. Because aside from that, it is not your job to be coaching the team. And guess what? They're never gonna be receptive to it. Y you can't take. Because people are going to, people have their ego, whatever. You can't tell a tank they're doing something wrong. Maybe one time's on a hundred, they'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, I am screwing up. Uh, thanks, right? Every other time, they're going to sit there and argue with it or argue with you about it like uh, like you said they were, okay? So so no reason for you to be uh, correcting anybody else on your team, right? Just, just focus on your own gameplay. And if you do want to make a call out like that, um, make a call out in a positive frame of, you know, oh, you're playing too far behind. Hey, Tank, let's go jump this person. Or, hey, I'm going to push this corner. Come up here with me. Whatever. Okay? that That's it. So, uh, arguing is just going to make... It makes people angry. Then they tilt. And then they... And then they do poorly. Ooh, that was close. Almost got squished. Okay, and then you got, got kind of caught out there. Uh, yeah, I've, the the gameplay so far has been been kind of erratic, but we'll we'll see. I don't like that you have a life weaver. I wish people understood how bad he is. There's there's a reason why like three different top 500 players started streaming uh, unranked to GM on life weaver, and they all quit at like diamond or something like that or around diamond or masters because they could, they just couldn't get any higher because he's so bad. Right. He's going to get tweaked and all of that stuff. Um, but right now I just don't recommend it, but anyway, neither here nor there. All right. So what I want to be doing and, and a, something you can also help your tank being less passive is you go up and take space. Moira can do that. Okay. Because you have an escape ability. I'm surprised she didn't eat your orb there. Counter call, fine, good, I like it. Not going to get a ton of value, but you're also going to deny the value that the enemy warrior is going to get, right? And you guys cap the point, so it's fine, right? You're going to build another ult quickly. And we kind of faded really far away from the team there. All right, so it is counterintuitive. There, it's, there's a couple of uh, things that I would like to see you do against a D.Va. Uh, it actually helps you learn how to take off angles because you always want to look where the D.Va is not looking uh, because she'll eat your orbs. Okay, so when you're out of juice, do not fire a healing orb. Go fire a damage orb where you're going to get value out of it and it's going to help charge your, charge your um, resources. So they're right here, right? Let's pretend. I'm not going to rewind it. They were still right here. Okay. Come over here, right? Because they're all right there. They're not going to be looking at you. Shoot an orb at them because the diva's over here, right? The diva's staring over here, you know, a few seconds ago. Shoot an orb out here. Shoot it against that and it'll bounce. You'll get the whole value out of that orb and the diva will never know it happened. 
Okay, she can't look everywhere at once, even in the top 500. Okay, so when you're playing against the diva, you need to find these alternate angles, which you should be finding anyway. But diva kind of makes you do it because she'll eat all your orbs. So look for those opportunities. I typically don't try to uh, face tank Afara, especially if you got a mercy. You're just not going to do anything, right? The only time I'm going to do that is if I can get from an off angle somewhere and I can I can take her attention, but she can't damage me because but you're basically just feeding her ult, right? It should be your goal on Moira is to take as little damage as possible. Look at that. That's perfect, right? Look for that. Look for the isolated target. Low targets, chase them down, and and do that. You seem to be hugging the cart a lot. Um, don't. You got a life weaver. He can sit on the friggin' cart. He can heal at range. He can move the cart, right? Like like he's doing now, right? That's perfect. But now you just went right back to the cart. You just gave up all the space you just took. Okay. So you don't need to fade away from the bomb. You can just fade and stay in the same spot if you're going if you want to do that. Because when you fade away from the bomb, now you have to run back. Okay. So they're more counter cold you. Uh, I, I don't really like you were chasing the diva to heal her. She was behind the sim wall at that point, right? And she's half health, that's fine. Go go chase a target. Go put pressure on the enemy team. This is the almost a mirror matchup. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, so Mercy's an idiot. She should have just gotten out. Now she's just going to stagger herself, right? And see, that's one of those things where you can... You can take advantage of the enemy team's stupidity, right? People, a lot of times, they'll complain about their team, my team this, that, whatever. Uh, the enemy team's doing the same shit. You just got to recognize it and punish it. Okay. So, yeah, as a, as a generality, if the enemy team has a diva, I never want to be in front of her. So just think about that during this whole match, you know, the different places you could go. I like to go up here. Um, yeah, you're going to... Die there because you weren't paying attention. Um, I like to go up high ground. You can go on the low ground over there, um, you know, and, and hug a corner. So you go and hug a corner, and then you, there's nobody you can really jump here because they're all going to kind of be close together, it looks like. Uh, you may be able to get on the sim a little bit, but probably not. She can get away from you pretty quickly. Um, so this is uh, one of those games where, you know, you're not going to have a ton of opportunity to uh, find isolated targets that are just kind of isolated on their own. They're almost always going to be a little bit together. Okay, you have coalescence. What are you doing? You know? What would I be doing? I would fade over here, orb, and coalescence. You're probably going to get counter cold. That was a weird bounce. Okay, now is that excellent time to coalescence because a lot of people uh, think the shield is just a uh, safe space now, and. It's not, because coalescence can go right through it. So people will, will they'll get themselves out of position. You gotta stop healing with this ultimate. People will get themselves out of position because they think they're safe behind the sim wall and then you beam them down. Um, stop using your ult to heal. I, I would like to see you play a couple of games where you don't heal at all with it. All you do is damage with it, okay? Uh, also, it seems like you're you're fading away from the diva bomb, but you don't know the timing of it, so you're just trying to fade away from it. Maybe that's what you're doing instead of what I was, you know, you just fade in one spot. Um, pay attention to the how long it takes the diva bomb to explode. I, I actually don't even know what it is. You just kind of practice it and get used to it, and then you can just fade right around it. You don't need to fade to anywhere specifically. Okay, but I would like to see you. 
practiced a few games where you only use coalescence to damage something, right? You don't use it until you see somebody like, okay, I'm going to beam somebody down with this thing, okay? Now, that doesn't mean hang on to it until you, you know, an opportunity presents itself. Make that opportunity happen. Go look for that stuff. That's crazy that far is doing some kind of weird trick to stay up there. Like, for example, she's over there by herself. Shoot an orb over there. Right? If you can see she's over there and you can't see the mercy beam, she's by herself. Right? Obviously, I can see through the walls right now, so I know she's by herself. But right, if you see her just sitting over there by herself, go get her. Um, and you need to get off the cart, 100%. I'd like to see you get off the cart. Go, go look. Go look for other opportunities to go somewhere else. So, and it doesn't have to be far. Look at this. All right? You're right here. Go right here. That's it. That's that's the only difference. And it's crazy how much of a difference that makes. Because if you're over here, right? You see how none of them are looking in this direction right now? Make them look in this direction. Make them chase you. And what does that do? It takes all of the pressure off of the off of your team, right? Especially because your Zarya is pretty hard charged, okay? If Especially if you take their Moira's um, attention, right? She is definitely dead right because the diva can't defense matrix the beam so this this sim should die okay you can make that happen faster you can make that easier by coming over here okay you can also shoot orbs if the diva's looking over there okay shoot an orb past her right here right forces mercy to do something other than stand around like mercy's do okay so i'm not talking about going on these mega flanks literally what you just walk around here that's it that's all there is to it, okay? What was that, right? Use your orbs for the right reason, okay? You got healed. Let your team heal you. And so even if you're, if you're over here, still that's better. And then... You can stay over there, right? You know the far is coming out of spawn by herself. You can you can go spawn camp people. That's a little bit more advanced, um, but it's something you can think about. Okay, you healed a full health uh, Zarya, right? Now you don't have your healing orb, or now you don't have your orb. So stop wasting your orbs. You wasted another one. Okay, so. That was 400 damage worth of damage orbs you didn't you just didn't use. Don't you dare shoot a healing orb. <laughs> okay, stop shooting healing orbs. Okay, good. You guys cap. It's great. You you can have a significantly higher impact on, on these team fights. It's crazy how much of how much more impact you can have on these team fights. You guys could have swept the ground with these guys, right? Doing just those little things that I talked about, taking those little off angles, stop shooting the friggin' healing orbs at nothing. Okay. You you have you have a lot of opportunity uh, to put more pressure on the on the enemy team, which in then, right, helps your team move forward. Okay, so they got a Junker Queen now. Uh, that's both a good and a bad thing, because, I mean, Junker Queen's super strong right now, um, but uh, y you have a little bit more liberty with your orbs um, and not get... See, this is great. I like this. You taking you taking her uh, attention takes the pressure off of your tank, okay? I don't like that you're on the low ground, okay? That's one of the reasons, right? She'll run your ass over. You can do everything you're doing from up here. You can fade jump, and you can be over here. If you fade jump over here, there's only one person on their team that can get to you, right? The Moira could eventually get to you, but it, it wouldn't. She'd have to waste cooldowns to do it, which means you'd have your cooldown. Um, it wouldn't be in her favor, and so that's the Hanzo, okay? And the chances of him chasing you out of here, it seems like they're pretty low because he's also on the low ground because he's an idiot, okay? Come up here. You can stand right here. You can shoot an orb against this. Okay, it'll go that way, gets here, damage orbs, put pressure on them, make them look at you, because if they're looking at you, they're not looking anywhere else. Okay. Use the high ground. Use the high ground. The the 
it is like the single easiest thing for you to get value without changing anything else about how you play is to start using the high ground more. Because what's the worst case? You go up to that high ground, right? Um, and somebody comes up there and forces you out, okay? One, the likelihood of that happening are pretty low. And then if it does happen, then you just fade out. It's no different than being on the low ground, except that you're less likely. You got to stop shooting orbs at the ground. I don't know what that is. Don't do that anymore. Use the map geometry. Um, shoot the orb against this wall and it'll bounce back towards you. Shoot the wall or orb over there so it bounces towards them. Okay. You need to think about your orb bounce past the first bounce. Okay. Um, the only time I shoot an orb at the ground is if there's a ceiling. Right, like that orb, that damage orb, that mortar shot was really good. You see that? You see how now it's going to bounce around over here and it's going to continue hitting? Right? See? Now their mortar is dumb because she's just standing out in the open against a widow. Right? Yeah, that was a good fade, but I, I don't like that you're here. You don't need to be here at all. So Junker Queen's pretty powerful right now, but um, she also synergizes really well with a Moira on her team, and she's also not that great against a Moira on the enemy team because most of her cooldowns just don't work against Moira, right? Her ult doesn't work against Moira because you can just fade out of it, right? So Moira is actually good against Junker Queen, right? So the her, them switching to Junker Queen, I, I would say, is a benefit to you. Especially because I would say Diva is better than on this map. Um, I rarely pick uh, a support or actually any role uh, based on the map. Um, I like to just play who I'm comfortable with. So, um, but I would say if we're just looking on paper, I would say Diva is better on this map because she has such easy access to the high grounds. That's a huge copy. Huge copy. You need to be in there helping with that. Mm, it's unfortunate. She kind of went in too far. She should have dropped down with the corner. Oh, now you don't have fade. Um, so there's a couple of things there with that that echo ult that you could have helped, right? Because you can't tell your echo what to do. Okay, it would have helped if you were up there with her, because then you could have dropped down with her and helped her push the enemy team, right? So another reason for you to be on high ground. Right, you can't you can't make your team conform to you. You can't do it. The only person in your team you can control is you. So what does that mean? Right? If the echo's up here and going to just jump into friggin' five of them like an idiot, but she has her ult up, you accommodate that, right? You work towards that. Uh, that's a good ult bounce or a orb bounce. Um, but you accommodate that, work around that. I would have shot an orb over here because somebody always likes to come over here. I'm looking at freaking Sigma's ass. So somebody likes to come over here and it'll bounce around really well over there. This is another good orb bounce, but I would always do this one first because somebody's always going to be over there. Uh, and you can force the Hanzo out of there, right? Especially now that you know he's there. So their Moira cold way too early. I'm really glad you didn't counter call that. She cold way too early, and you saw she got zero value out of it. Yeah, see how how, how easily you counter Junker Queen's entire kit, basically, because you can just fade away from it, and it cleanses everything. Yeah. Uh, I would call there. I That would put a lot of pressure on their team. It would help your team push up. Um, it probably would have helped your Ash live, because the Hanzo would have been backing up. Okay. Because, okay, so your tank is being really passive, right? You're talking about how he's playing too far back. He's, he's being really passive right now. Okay, if you call that, it could, I'm not saying it will, but it could get him to move up. Okay, and that's how you kind of enable him to move up. 
because basically he's kind of moving back and forth as they do. He is not proactively taking space. He is reactively taking space. He's taking space as they move back. So guess what? You make them all walk backwards through coalescence, he's going to move up. Takes the pressure off of your team. Okay. And now, instead of that, you're just not... And it makes it so you're not sitting on your, your ult. Because what I can see happening here is you're going to wait to use it, and their, their more is going to get closer to ult than you are, and she's going to end up out-cycling your ultimate. And what I mean by that, oh, she wait, that Junker Queen waited for you to fade. I guarantee it. I guarantee she was waiting for you to fade to do that. Because that's what I would do. I mean, she had just gotten her ult. There's a chance that she got lucky and was only using it because she just got it. Um, but you have to be careful about that because you're going to die here, aren't you? Yeah. She will run you down quick if you don't have fade. So you need to make sure you're using the fade to your advantage. So once again, now you, don't, you still haven't used your ult. Look at that. And the enemy Moira was at 26% already. Okay, you can hear stuff going on over here. I don't know what's going on over here, but I can hear a Symmetra. Okay, yep, there she is. Her teleporter's right here. She's dead. Dead. You cannot contest this. Okay? Your tank does not have any mobility. They are not going to get there, even if you go in touch, right? They are not going to get there before you die. You cannot contest this. But you can hear this. I heard it. Go kill her. Easy, easy kill. Right? And make her walk back from spawn. So you can hear her over there. Make sure you're using your sounds. Right? Your sound cues. Uh, so you did want to go touch. Yeah, th there was just no reason for that. Right? Yeah, and then you're going to get punished for it. So, there are times when you do touch. Uh, most of the time, it's that you're actually not going to. Uh the only time I would touch that if it's like overtime, right? And you shoot a uh, healing orb and you try and stay alive. What are you typing at your tank right now? <laughs> well, I guess you're on console. Maybe you don't, I guess you're not typing at them. Um, you know, if it's overtime or your tank's pretty close, right? Um, and that just comes with the situational awareness. Um, Okay, so the the enemy more is at seventy two percent ult. So I wanted to I wanted to check that as soon when you ulted. That's a good. That was a good chase down. Because even if she would have had fade, right, and faded out of it, you take you're taking her out of the fight. And that's big. That was that was a good ult. It was a good ult, but it was seventy two percent too late, right? Because think if you would have cold like right after her. Right, because she called too early in that last fight, or the last time she had it. If you would have called right after her, you would also be, you know, seventy, eighty, maybe already to your ult. Just depends, right? How much closer you would have been to your dick's ult? Because now you're going to have trouble keeping up with her cycle if she uses her ult quickly and doesn't also hold on to it. That was a good bounce. I like that because it bounced against that and went that way. That's good. Do that stuff more. All right. Here, I'm looking for damage. Okay. You can hear the Junker Queen. So I sure as hell don't want to be here. I would be up here, right? Somebody's going to want to come this way, right? If they're smart, they will. So you have to outsmart the smart people. And go up here. And then even if they don't and they all come through here, you still have an angle on them. And then if they push you, you just fade away up, up the stairs. And there's a mega up there. That's a good bounce. Okay, so I hear the Genji up there. Well, guess who's a really good Genji counter? You are. Okay. And he's by himself. And he's on fire. Okay. Keep the pressure on him. Ooh, that was a bad ult. Okay, so the enemy Mora. The enemy Mora keeps making huge mistakes. Huge mistakes, right? That you can capitalize on. I don't know what the fuck she was thinking. <laughs> you don't 
You don't coalescence while you're in grav because you cannot fade out of it, especially if they have a... Because your win condition is grav dragon, right? That is your win condition. They should know that. So once again here, I'm still looking for... Uh, once that Genji's looking at you, you gotta you got to get away. you got to randomize your movement a little bit more too. <clears throat> but anyway... Yeah, I'm always always looking for a, a, another angle where I can damage. Uh, and just while we're kind of on the topic, what are you doing? Get out there, dude. Don't stand and spawn. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if you're, like, yelling at your tank or whatever. Uh, don't do that. Just get back out there. Uh, just while we are have a Sombra in the match, just so you know that your uh, damage beam will not bring her out of cloak. Good. And see, you fade out of the ult. That's good. Um, your damage beam will not bring her out of cloak. The only time it will deny her cloak is if she is in the in the process of hacking, right? Because she's detectable. Anytime she's detectable. So if she's behind a Hanzo Storm or arrow and you can see her, but she's still cloaked, um, you can um, you can damage beam her then. Uh, but you can't just spy check with her. Um, and that's a that's a Team Fortress Two term. Spy checking a lot of, especially when you had the pyro. The pyro was kind of like May, shot out basically at a flamethrower instead of an ice thrower. I, and I'm pretty sure May is kind of May's design is kind of a nod to the nod to the pyro. But anyway, off topic. Um, pyros used to just walk around puffing their flamethrower, looking for spies because spies did basically the same thing. They could instead instead of going invisible though, they they turned into. Um, They turned into one of your teammates. So anyway, all right. So I was running my mouth. I wasn't paying attention to why you died. Yeah, hug corners more. I, I see you stand out in the open a lot. You get your fade forced out because you're, you're standing out in the open. Um, Ramatra is actually a pretty decent Moira counter because he runs so fast in his, in his uh, nemesis form especially with his ult, his, and he also has a ton of armor and shit during his ult, uh, so he's actually really hard to kill, um, especially with a Moira. So uh, you, when the enemy team has a Ramatra, just stay away from him. Oop, and that was it. Okay, so big picture stuff. Um, I want to see you take more off angles. I want to see you take more high ground. Okay, don't hold on to your ult. Uh, your orbs, work on shooting them against the map geometry. I saw you did it a, a few times, so you, you know to do it. Uh, just do that more often. Uh, stop shooting friggin' healing orbs and stop using your coalescence to heal, right? You can, but that should not be the primary reason you're using it. Okay, so uh, lots of good stuff. There's You got a lot of opportunities, which is great, right? It's better than me watching it and be like, oh, yeah, you played perfectly. Uh, best of luck, you know? So you got some opportunities to improve, and that's good. Uh, but, yeah, play a few games where you only use your ultimate to damage, right? Play a few games where you don't do anything else but think about going on the high ground, right? Do it until it becomes habit, right? And that's how you, you get better at this game is practice one thing until it becomes a habit and then practice the next thing and the next thing. So, cool. All right, well, that'll about do it for this one. I hope it helped. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.